Ever tried to grind your own flour? Well, I have. I've done it on a quernstone. A quernstone is just a flat piece of stone with another stone. You put the grain on, you rub it backwards and forwards, and it is back-breaking. Of course, the next development was to make it turn in a circle, but it was still hard work, and it's where the phrase the daily grind comes from. You were grinding your own flour. So when you're looking at a way of escaping that drudgery, what you want is power. You imagine how backbreaking using that quern would be, but here at Crabble Corn Mill, they've got 10 stones in five pairs, each weighing a ton. So there's 10 tons of stone right here, and they could process 40 tons per annum of grain. And it's no surprise, here in the hopper, They've got 60 kilos of grain. This is the horse that holds everything. It's a damsel and a shoe feeding it into those stones. Those stones are turned by the river, producing the flour. Good things about water, there's a lot of it. And it's heavy, so there's a lot of force. But it's slow. So if we want to use that power to do something like grind flour, then we need some way of capturing it some way of moving it, some way of changing its direction, some way of applying it, and some way of changing the speed and torque. So we need to do basically five things. The way we do those things is through gears. Nobody really knows who invented gears or how old gears are. There are records to the 4th century BC in China. And of course, the Antikythera was discovered in the Mediterranean, and that dates back to 100, 150 BC, with a history to, through to Alexandria, and you're talking about 3rd century BC. Better place to show that is somewhere like this. This is Crabble Corn Mill in Dover. It was first built in 1812, and it's run purely by volunteers. They're a great bunch of guys, and they're looking for people, so I've put the phone number down in the description. If you fancy coming here and volunteering at a watermill, give them a ring. But it's a fantastic demonstration of mechanisms and gears. This is the main wheel. Two people died in here. The water wheel captures the power, the stones apply the power, the rest of it is the mechanism of the gears, and they're the same yesterday as they are today as they will be tomorrow. And it's arguable that the windmill, water mill and clocks represented the height of medieval technology when it comes to gearing. And in a water mill you can see those three functions clearly, and those three functions are transmission, force and rotation direction. What we mean by transmission is speed. Different sized gears can be used to efficiently change the speed of a system. Large gears with lots of teeth when they interlock with small gears with few teeth have to spin fewer times to keep up with the total motion of the machine. The smaller gears have to spin faster and this gives you a way to increase rotational speed. Force is in a similar setup. You can use gears to increase the force of a system. That extra force doesn't appear out of nowhere. Turning the small gear fast will make the large gear turn slower, but with much more force. This is what we mean when we say that torque is traded off against speed in gearing systems. And the final one is rotational direction. Gears are very useful changing the direction of the rotational motion. Spur gears, for instance, can reverse the direction. Worm gears change rotation by 90 degrees, and bevel gears can transmit motion around corners. Milling flour is perhaps the most well-known application of a water mill, but they were no means restricted to just that. They were used for trip hammers, for things like forges and uh, paper making. They were used for bellows, again for forging and forcing air, and they were used for sawing in lumber. They had the same principle. You had a power source, the water, you had an application, bellows, trip hammer, saw, grinding, and you had some method of communicating the two in appropriate way, which was the gearing system. This is the same problem we have today for power generation. And the same principles apply. We have some kind of primary input power. Water, wave, wind, arm strength, cycle power, whatever it is. There's some kind of input. Then we use some kind of gear mechanism to change it to what's appropriate to the output. Now, when you're generating power, what's appropriate to the output is being able to spin a generator at the rated speed and rated torque. 
that's what you're looking for when it comes to putting gears between those two elements. But in essence, you're doing exactly the same thing that the forefathers did when they were sawing logs, hammering steel, grinding grain. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.